guys. I love these things. Uh, I love these things so much. This is the third one of these we've had on the channel. This is another one of those little hidden secret autos. So guys, this is the Diskin Fire and Drop Point. We're gonna take a good look at it. I really like these. So hang on a second, guys. If you're watching on headphones, turn down the volume because here comes the music. the touch knives double action I have I still have another disc in double action here at the house that belongs to Elijah Isham because Elijah if you're watching I need your address you got to send it to me I can't send your knife back to you if you don't send me your address um, I borrowed it this time last year at Portland to fix a sharpening issue for him and it's still here because Elijah Isham's all over the country he's all over the place so this is the matte disc and fire drop point in L max steel double action it is incredibly smooth um, not to say anything against the touch knife sparrowhawk i think this is my favorite double action so far only not so much that it's a better knife or anything like that it's just a larger knife i like the sparrowhawk but it's so tiny uh, this is this is just a full size knife really nice action easy to deploy either way the spring action on it's great and like even if you weren't going to use it as a double action as an auto it's still a great great knife so let's get this flipped around take a good close look at it so that i can sharpen this and get it back to matt because this is his newest acquisition he really likes this knife and uh, i can't say as i blame him because it's great so let's go ahead and get this turned around all right guys we're in for a treat this is not just a really cool knife it is a really well well-made gorgeous knife checkered carbon fiber with the diamond i mean you can see the diamonds on it really really well i guess you can't see the diamonds i can definitely see the diamonds on it and i can feel them with this light all you're seeing is the opalescence of the yeah there you go you can see the diamond pattern both sides pocket clip pocket clip's a little tight that's my only issue with that lightning strike carbon fiber or thunderstorm carbon fiber that's what is this this is the lightning strike carbon fiber um backspacer and then just the overall blade attractive 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 package here with this uh, clip point i guess you'd call it. i guess this is a clip point not drop point i'm sorry uh clip point blade really comfortable in hand guys uh you can see action on it super super smooth but then you get that little cool factor of being able to deploy it auto i think right about here I'm gonna throw in a slow-mo clip. So now you guys see the action and yes, I keep hitting the tripod, I'm sorry. Finish on this blade is a super fine, almost polished stone wash. Uh, real reminiscent of that finish that I have on my uh, that Ferrum Forge uh, Fortis of mine. Uh, Done in LMAX, like I said, LMAX is a decent, decent steel. I like LMAX a lot. Uh, sometimes people have an issue where they, they, it gets overheated. Uh, this knife is now extremely sharp. This is a knife I cut myself with. If you happen to be following me on Instagram, I cut myself with it a few days ago and posted up the picture while I was sharpening it. I slipped off the stone and cut myself. Not horribly bad, but cut myself enough that uh, I had, couldn't finish sharpening for the day. So let's look at some specs. What are we looking at here? This is a 8.125 overall length, double action, titanium scales, blade length of 3.625 with a handle length of 4.2, I'm sorry, handle length of 4.5. Overall weight on this is listed at 4.24 ounces, but let's grab my scale and let's make sure because you know sometimes sometimes weights on these more custom made knives can be off a little bit at, 
from here from one knife. So we're gonna do a weight just because. Well, I mean, on top of that, I can do it in grams. So what I say, four point two four ounces. Sorry, guys, it is hot today. I'm I'm fighting with my brain to make it work. Uh, so one hundred and twenty three grams. Really not that heavy. Let's see what it comes out to in ounces. Um, so in ounces, it is. I'm gonna say it's gonna tell me it's four and a quarter. Four and a quarter, right on the button. 4.24 ounces, right about four and a quarter ounces. So not that heavy of a knife. So hang on just a second. Let me get this right, put away. For a size comparison, as usual, we will use my Sabenza. So yeah, really not that, it's comparable to uh, a uh, Sabenza, Chris Reeves Sabenza. So the only issue I really have with this knife, and I'm gonna show you right now, it's not anything major, really. Um, there is a really low spot here that I still have to take care of for sharpening. I just wanted to get it sharp so I could put it in a video. On each side of this, there's a really low spot right here that is that I'm having a hard time get sharpened out. Uh, it's like it's I have to take off material on both sides of it to get it down to where there's not fat. There's a flaw in the edge right there. Not such a big deal. It's a hand ground custom knife. Um, the Thumb stud, I wish that, I think I said it in the spider monkey video I shot earlier today. I wish the thumb stud was further down, but you can't do that with this knife. I understand why the thumb stud is actually the stop pin. So that's where it touches up right there. That's your stop pin, just like on a lot of striders, external stop pin, no internal stop pin. It is strictly these thumb studs that act as your stop pin. But let's be honest, guys, how many people are actually going to deploy it that way? It's so much more fun to do it that way. Um, the pocket clip, it's not a design issue with pocket clip. I do wish that isn't horrible, but I wish it was a little, one, I wish the pocket clip was a little thinner because it is very, very, very stiff. There's way more tension on it that I would want. And then this pocket clip is kind of proud down here at the end. Uh, in my hands... I'm not really feeling it unless I hold it like this. Like if I was trying to, to get it into a, if I had it in certain positions, I can feel it. But like, if I was going to do some heavy cutting with it, that, that really doesn't bother me that much. The only issue, like I said, really, it's not so much, I, aesthetically, I don't like it sticking up like that. And it does have a tendency to get caught on things. I have carried this a few times. It gets caught on things. Just too much tension. My big thing is in and out of pants, in and out of pants, this can be a nightmare because this is all textured. There's no flat spot. This is a pocket ripper. You can see there's pocket material under there. With that much tension on that pocket clip and that textured carbon fiber, it is sticky in and out of pants pockets. Even in and out, I'm wearing track pants. Let's see. We can hear it. Let's see. Can I get it even in the pocket? I can, but like it's even hard to get out of a pair of like track shorts, um, track pants kind of thing. So even, even on really thin clothing, that's a little stiff. But as far as fit and finish and all those things, like look at that pivot. Matt's knives are always great. I have not seen a Matt Diskin knife that did not speak to me. I like all of his knives, this one especially. Really, really, really like this. Uh, these were about $750 when I saw them on Blade HQ. I know they go for more on the uh, secondary market because there's not a lot of them, but holy cow, guys. I Like I said, I think this is my favorite double action that we've had on the channel. So I can show you the other one. If you hang on just a second, the other disc in double action, I'll go get it real quick. So this is the other disc and it's here at the house. Both of them are great. I just prefer this one a little bit better. This one is Elijah Isham's Tonto version. This is a really great knife too. Uh, I pref I wish that the uh, handle, I, I wish that the this one was as hollow, was hollow ground like this one. This one is super thin and slicey. Uh, but yeah, both of them, great action on both of them. I think I like this one because it's a little bit easier to deploy than this one. But yeah, both of them are double actions. Both of them work great. The, they're <laughs> great, great knives, guys. Great, great knives. Matt's, and Matt is a really, really nice guy. So let's get this turned around and do some final thoughts on it. And we will uh, wrap the so video. Like I said earlier, this is Matt's newest acquisition uh, he was able to finally get a hold of one of these. He's been trying to get one for a while. I really like this knife. If it was not for the fact that it's $700, $800 knife, easy $800 on the secondary market, I, I would probably jump in and try and get one.
but at, at the current the current financial status of the channel there will not be a disc and fire in my uh near future so it's just nice to really get to hold on to one of these and hang out just have it in it, these are great the nice thing about matt is he's got so many knives and he's more than willing to let me borrow anything anytime i want to carry one uh but yeah the fact is like i would love to have one of these i love the double actions the double actions are so much fun they're really really cool uh and if they're done really well man they are awesome this I think this one and the the touch are on the same kind of level. Matt and, and, and Will Touch are on basically the same level when it comes to how good their knives are made and, and the attention to detail. So guys, you can't go wrong with one of these. And like I said, LMAX, even if you've heard horror stories about the LMAX with some of the issues, a lot of that was manufacturer's issues with grinding uh, edges dry or grinding edges too fast and things like that. It happens, uh, especially with LMAX. LMAX is one of those steels that is really, really picky uh, about heat after after your temper cycle, additional heat. It's one of those steels that can be picky, but still a really good steel. Guys, I'm going to put stuff in the corners. If you, if you don't like the videos, give them a thumbs down, but you got to give me a reason. I would love to have reasons to why people don't like the videos. If it's just that you don't like me, yeah, tell me, but don't be surprised if I take some of the comments down. Not because I disagree with them, but just because sometimes they can be a little bit on the edge of reaching the guidelines things. Um, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you really like the videos, we have the option to give applause at the bottom. It's money that's donated directly to the channel. Google does not take any of it. I get 100% of that money. And we have memberships available if you want to join the channel and get in on the exclusive giveaways. I have a knife that I am currently making as a giveaway knife for the channel. It's one of my custom Viper neck knives. Uh, it's almost done it just needs the edge grind done on it I just finished the satin yesterday and then uh yeah it's it's gonna be for the channel i have a bunch of other stuff that's gonna be giveaways for members only uh i'm getting ready to shoot a giveaway video probably tomorrow um today is uh, sunday tomorrow's memorial day uh i think i might just take the day and not do anything on memorial day uh, but i haven't decided yet so guys like I said, I love you all. Take care of yourselves on Memorial Day. If you're one of the members you're seeing that this weekend, be careful. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. A lot of stupid people out. Uh, it's hot. Take care of yourselves. Don't drink too much. Be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.